project and be macro, but focus on the micro, because we don't need loads. We just need the right people. And then we need to continue to offer value to them so they choose to stick around. Hey everyone, it's Johnny here. Thanks for tuning in. I often come across businesses that have a great product, a great team, really good systems and processes, and actually pretty good marketing content. But the one thing that lets them down is that they struggle to get their prospects over the finishing line. They find it hard to make the sale. And often this is because they find it difficult to communicate their value, to package up their proposition and deliver that to their customers in an authentic way. This normally just comes down to storytelling, about packaging up what makes them valuable and why should their customers care. And with this in mind, I got the opportunity to talk to Dennis Morrison. Dennis is the founder of Audience Magnet. He's a super cool guy. He's really engaging and he's really personable. And we had a really, really good conversation. We spoke about how he gives his clients or his learners the tools so they can tell their stories, package up what makes them valuable, what is their proposition and how they can deliver that to prospects and turn that into sales. So this is the conversation with Dennis Morrison. Enjoy. Dennis, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. I hope you're well, Johnny. Um, thanks for inviting me on your show and I can't wait to have a great conversation with you and your listeners to kind of eavesdrop on what we talk about. Definitely. I've got about three pages of questions. There's no way I'm going to get through. I've got so much I want to ask you. Um, a lot of my curiosity came about from a post that you put out on LinkedIn not that long ago. And it was talking about storytelling and I it resonated with me so much. It was so true that everyone's talking about storytelling. Everyone says you should tell this story and, and do this, but no one's actually saying how to tell stories. And that kind of led me on to you. And I, I love reading your content, but talk me through some of the tools that people should be thinking about if they really want to tell their story about themselves or their business. Okay, so I'm not necessarily going to focus on tools, but maybe what approaches people can have, you know, I think first and foremost, no one cares about you. Your story is not important, unless there's context. And it's all about the context, you know. So many people say talk about, oh, tell your story and people will come in. But if there's no relation to my journey or what I'm doing, why do I wanna to listen to your story? So remember, it's about them, not you. Now that's the starting base. Once you've got that, you're like, aha. Okay, so what's my journey? What are the things that I've done where people can resonate with? You know, because the reality is we're humans. I think gone are the days. I, I'm kind of an advocate for the new way of marketing. It's real people. It's not about gurus, it's not about, yes, I used to be like this and I have a hundred million following and you should copy me because if you've got three or a hundred or a thousand, how does that relate to you? I feel there are so many experts who don't have loads of followings, but they're experts in what they do. So by, and you could be one, you could be someone who's listening, you could be one. So first and foremost, I say, be yourself, quirks and all. Now I'm gonna tell you that I think I appear quite natural now, but I've always been behind the camera and it was a tough learning journey to be comfortable in front of the camera. I was like a bumbling idiot, like a rabbit in front of the headlights, but it only happens with practice, you know? So I, I, I think a good way to find out whether you're speaking how you normally speak is if you have close friends or another half and they're honest with you, they will tell you when you're putting on your camera voice or you're speaking as they know you to speak. So that would be step one. Now, the other thing, it's all about using frameworks. Now, the beautiful thing about storytelling is we all understand it. 
Um, I like to say to people that storytelling is a language that we all know. We just don't know the details. So to put it in context, um, whenever I meet people from abroad, I may say something and they'll say, what does that word mean? And I'll go, hmm, I don't know actually. So I look it up and I realize I've said the word in the right context and it meant what it meant, but I didn't know that detail. So it's a learnable skill. Yeah, so if you imagine you've known it since you've been four or five, but you don't know the details, once you start knowing and understanding the details, you then can craft engaging conversations, engaging communications, underpinned by the frameworks of storytelling. I love that. Yeah, the framework is, that's the kind of where I would kind of like to lead in here and find, understand that framework. But there's a few things I'd, that you've said there that I'd like to unpack. You know, when we talk about when we first start making content, when we first start storytelling, it actually reminds me of when I started my own, I call it a personal brand, but I suppose it was me trying to find my authentic voice. I was always working with an organization and I was always hid behind the banner of a corporate logo or a corporate platform. And I wanted, I really wanted to kind of have my own voice, tell my own stories. And I never really sort of, sort of saw them as stories at the beginning. It was just trying to kind of, it was like all about knowledge transfer, but I didn't realize how much story was in the knowledge transfer. When I kind of look at other, when I was at my early stages of looking at other people and look at their storytelling, I'd always go to their first video and not their last video. And what it made me realize was that no one was perfect when they started. Mm -hmm. And actually what is important and what's really interesting is the journey, the journey of how you become a storyteller. It's not normally the story at the end, it's, it's how you arrive there. And, and I suppose that's something that you do, that you, you help and guide people through that journey of how to tell their authentic self. So I, I, I so I suppose the question here is, is this enabling that you do? How does this enabling process work when you're working with your clients? Um, well, first and foremost, um, well, I have a program which guides people to become business storytellers, but taking that and then all the structures within that, but let me just walk you through some of it. Um, first and foremost, it's actually understanding, and, and I, I want to, have a caveat here i'm talking about business storytelling I'm not talking about drama storytelling there are so many similarities but there are subtle differences yeah so i want people to understand that we are telling stories on purpose yeah there's a reason why we're telling the story yeah and yes stories can be informational they can have entertainment they can have lots of different things but you're doing it for a reason you have a product or service that you'd like people to purchase and buy so that's step one the other thing is really getting clear on all the things everyone talks about. Who are you talking to? What are they struggling with? What do you offer that can help them? And I think around it all is, although I say sell with story, the key is you want them to choose to buy what you offer. So how can you communicate to them in a way when they're like, he gets me, she gets me. Oh, wow, I feel this person is the right person to take me to the next step of my journey. And that journey could be anything. You could be a coach, you could offer, um, be an agency, you know, you can offer services, services, but people hire people because they can do things that they can't or they want a shortcut to it. So really it's about understanding the journey of your ideal client or audience. And then you're able to design your stories in order that they can remember you. Because we're competing with so much nowadays. It's not just social media. We're competing with what you watch on Netflix, competing with looking at your phone, competing with games, competing with reading books. So really the most valuable thing right now is someone's attention. So how are you going to grab their attention? And when I say grab, I don't mean flashy and, and jumping up and down. I feel that grabbing attention now is how can you appear like a real person? Mm. Then 
How can you infuse your expertise around your subject matter around that? Not by saying, I do this and I'm the best thing since sliced bread, you should come to me. But this is your opportunity to create stories, scenarios that clients maybe have faced. And you can extract those and think, well, what was the journey I took them through? What are the challenges they have? And then when you start infusing that, you want the listener, just like all the viewer, just like when we watch a film, we want people to engage. And I think the beautiful thing with storytelling, we can watch anything, we can watch anything. If done well, we feel like we are in the story with the character. And that's what you're looking to do for your ideal client to imagine and see themselves within the stories that you're telling. I hope that's um, done no, that's to answer your question. It really leads on to what I was about, um, about to say, actually, because the, I have this conversation with lots of different people that work in comms, they work in marketing, or just work in business. And you know, if we look at a story arc, um, and we look at different characters within the story, everyone always says that you know the customer is the hero, and the hero needs to be right at the center of the story. I suppose the challenge is, is that, as a business, we are trying to communicate to the customer as the hero. But the more that we can put the hero in the center of our story, the better almost, because they can really relate to it. But mm. obviously, a lot of businesses find that hard to, to get the customer right at the center of the story, because either one, they may have only just started trading, or how what are the techniques that we can use to make the customer they are, they, are, they are in the story, even if actually the story is being narrated by the customer. So is there any, any examples that you've got from the work that you've done where you've worked with clients or the, and they've delivered their story in a unique way that really connects with their audience? Well, unique's tough. I, 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 I like stepping away from unique because then, I mean, what kind of got me a bit tired and really got me to push forward this whole idea of business storytelling is everyone uses people like Apple as an example. Yes, if I have a billion dollars and I have a marketing budget of X amount, I can do anything. And so I like coming back and firstly saying that just who you are and what you offer, you have uniqueness in that. That's step one. Yeah. Secondly, if you've never done it before, I like this as a good starter. Imagine if, now you imagine if you had your first client and they went through your process and journey. Your ideal client, what are some of the struggles you feel they may be going through? How could you couch that in a story that helps them identify that, hmm, you are the person that we should, um, you're the person that I should go to if I have this problem. So that's if you just started. Now, if you're a bit more established, I think some businesses and people struggle for putting their clients at the center or the hero of the story or the heroine of the story because and by the way I, i've suffered with this and i'm not saying i'm over it it's ego yeah. that's the problem it's ego it's like but what about me i need to tell them about me because if i don't talk about me they might not know i exist so if you find you're doing that just check yourself and think, who's speaking here? Is it speaking through ego? Sometimes it could be insecurity. But I'm telling you, just look at when you decide to buy something. Now, let me flip that round again. And people say, I don't know how to tell stories. Have you ever decided you want to have a meal? And you're with friends or your other half, you know, and you're and you're like, you really want to eat Thai, you know, but they feel like Italian. Then you start saying, well, actually, this particular restaurant, it's got really good reviews and so-and-so went to it. You're telling a story. Have you ever been late? And what do you say? You know, you know the good thing to say is, you know, I'm sorry I'm late. But what you say is like, oh, I'm sorry I couldn't make it. The train was delayed. And then this person, we are telling stories. So you already know how to. As I said, it's a language you already understand. We are story-driven, story-enabling story creative beings ourselves. You just have to realize that. And then once you do, it's like, okay, how can I purposefully tell stories for my business? Understanding that we can take 
all of the magic of the storytelling through all the Netflix and movies we see, but it's not the same. Yeah? We can use the structures, we can understand that it is about the hero or the pr protagonist, and that's your ideal client or customer. Yeah. No, I love it. Do you know, what, do you know what's interesting? I'm, my, my mind was going crazy then because I'm thinking about, I'm constantly thinking like about all the different ways that you can tell a story. There's so many different ways. And I, and I love the fact that you can look at it. I'm exploring this thing at the moment about brand and category design and category design being, you know, what solution or value that you offer your customers to branding, which is about identity and, and how they both work together and how you can deliver, how you can, show or, pre or present your solution in an effective way so i actually would like to jump into media now because we've okay. talked about we've talked about well m media as in the medium that which we can use so there's so many different ways once we've got our story nailed we think we've got a story that we feel that can deliver our message in a really really authentic way then we've got, how do we present that? And I think a lot of businesses struggle here. Like, you know, because you, if we think about all our visual communications and marketing touch points from our website, from all our digital assets, and then in person, in the off, you know, offline, in the real world. So we've got different types of media. How, what, let's talk about words and pictures. Okay. How do we, how do we deliver our story? What are the different ways that we can do it? And I suppose the other question to bolt onto that is, what are the most effective ways of delivering our message? Okay, I'm, can I answer the last part first? Of course. Um, the most effective way is the way that's going to work to attract your ideal client. And we're all different. Um, some people like video, some people like text, some people like images. And that's what all the different social medias are there for. You've noticed they're very specific and certain people gravitate towards them. So storytelling can work in any medium, really. Now, the, the other thing about storytelling or infusing your communication with storytelling, I like to say, when people say, hear storytelling, sometimes they're like, oh, what do I do? Let's just change that word. How about a conversation? You're having a conversation with someone. And that could be using your voice, like we're doing now. This could be using video. It could be using captions. It could be using images. If you think about photography, someone takes a photograph and just say of a beautiful landscape. What are they evoking? When you go, ah, oh, I like that. What's actually happening? Because they're just using one image to tell a story to you. But the story it tells you may be different to the story it's telling the person next to you. So mm. I feel we need to, firstly, we need to be careful not to spread ourselves thin. And secondly, choose the medium that you are most comfortable with to start. Um, there's nothing worse than paralysis by analysis. And you're speaking to a recovering person who's like that. So I'd say choose a medium that you feel comfortable with. And then the next aim is to slowly push yourself outside your comfort zone. Because we all know if we're in our comfort zone, we're not really pushing, we're not really stretching our possibilities. Um, I think one of the issues people have a lot of the times is they start or try to start with something they're not good, keep looking at why they're not good and then stop. Yeah, and like anything, it's about building up confidence and getting the cogs going. So I've answered the last part of your question, but I've kind of slightly forgotten the first part of your question. Well, no, no that that answered both of it really, okay. because I'm understanding like the media and what we can use. And, and you're right that every medium can be different. And I, and I suppose through this conversation, we will gravitate towards video because, you know, we talk about a words telling a, a thousand, a picture saying a thousand words and a, a video being a million words or whatever, a mm -hmm. weird number it is so we are i'm moving towards video and i think for i think video in terms of the impact is right up there and what it can do and how it can uh connect with people mm -hmm. i think before we get on to that though um 
it was interesting what you just said about a conversation because I I recently have started making a series of videos that's all based around conversation because what I was doing with my own videos main two videos that I create it, uh, for about brand building is interviews and speaking to interesting people like yourself and monologues mm -hmm. and I've struggled with the monologues and sometimes my monologues are like up to like 35 minutes long and they're literally a freestyle and often I watch them back and think oh what are you talking about because I it was the only way of like getting over my my thoughts and so I, I turned around to a couple of colleagues who create content and said look will you just interview me will you just could I give you some questions and you create some questions and let me go and I and I knew it would be much, I knew it would, well, I knew it would be different, mm. but I knew that I'd be more relaxed. I wouldn't be too worried about cameras and microphones and I could talk to someone. And I definitely found that my, my responses to the questions, they were much more, they were tighter. They were much more concise. They were much, they were realer. And I found the core truth of what I want to say much quicker. And I, and I love the idea of, beginning with a conversation, uh, a relaxed, truthful, meaningful conversation, because a good question leads on to a meaningful answer. And I, and I love that as a starting point. And that could then lead into ideas and thoughts and other kind of channels and, and media. So yeah, that wasn't really a question or anything, now, but I, I just love what you're saying mm. about a conversation. Um, what I'm actually going to do now, I'm going to jump onto my quick fire questions. Great. Now, they are, they normally give the longest answers, but they normally give the best answers. Okay. Right? Now, this question here is, if, you, if you've, anyone's heard my show, I ask this question to all my guests. But what's the most important thing that you've learned in the past 18 months? Oh, what's the most important thing? I would say the most important, hmm. I wouldn't say I've, I've learned this over the past 18 months, but maybe it's come to the fore. I think everyone ultimately wants freedom. And what does freedom mean? Freedom of choice, you know, freedom to do what you'd like when you'd like. And that means, you know, having the right kind of clients, earning the, the kind of income that gives you that choice. And I think that's really kind of come to the fore. Um, I think that's a tough question because I've learned lots of things. So I'm not sure what the biggest things I've learned. Um, I've kind of, I, I suppose I've, maybe I've learned, so my background's from behind the camera. So I, I as I said, I struggled being in front of the camera. And uh, this year I, started going on podcast shows people have been telling me hey Dennis you need to go on podcast shows for the last five seven years and I've got every excuse not to do it but this year I said all right I'm going to do it so I actually did it all myself I reached out to I, I reached out by actually researching each person see if there was a the right fit I communicated with them got on a podcast and first couple of podcast shows I was there I was like really hot and sweating and like oh my god I'm being interviewed oh do I know what I'm talking about I don't want to appear an idiot oh where are my notes I was going like that and I was just like oh, oh whoa. and then after the second one I got to the third one I went what are you doing this is a conversation the minute I said that bush no pressure why when was the last time you prepared for a conversation you don't however when you speak about your subject matter, you've already done the work. You spent hours, maybe years within that world. And the advantage of a conversation, it allows you to respond to someone else. I struggle myself going straight to camera. I find it very difficult. I, I, I speak differently. I stumble upon my words. I wanna get the words exactly right. But there's something about conversation that if I say something wrong, I can correct myself and I, I don't feel aware about it. So I feel just changing the language from interview to conversation. So I'm filming a video of myself that I'm having a conversation with someone means it's all right to mess up because we never think in a conversation, oh, I messed up. I, I, I stumbled upon my word. I said tomorrow, I meant today. So many, I, that's tip one. 
Number one, I think it's a massive tip. It's all a conversation because people buy into people. And I think there's a real subtle change that's happening over this last 18 months where people are like, you know what? I want to see if I can connect with the real you. Yes, we may not be IRL in real life, but you know what? If the person feels genuine, I can look into their eyes. I myself as an individual can make a decision about whether I like or don't like what they say, whether I trust or don't trust them. Because really, the eyes are the windows to the soul. So this gives you the opportunity. And I don't know about you, but when you're trying to prepare for something in front of you, your eyes kind of glaze over. It's like you're another person. So it's like, let's embrace our quirkiness. Let's embrace all the things that make who you are. You know, and I think when we do that, suddenly we don't have to think too hard. And then it comes back, when we come back to storytelling, you're then, okay, now I feel comfortable. Let's get a bit of structure around how I communicate because I'm doing it on purpose. Yeah? yeah. And on purpose means I'm doing it for a reason. You know, I'm sharing my real self, but there's a journey I'm taking people. I'm not just rambling aimlessly. There's a reason why. Um, so that's what I would say. I've, I've, I know I've gone around and roundabouts, but um, hopefully it's helped answer some of the question. You, you came back to the answer perfectly because you started with saying about freedom. And when you talked about the, the, the going on podcasts, I felt like the podcast and giving you your voice has given you that freedom, freedom to be you, freedom mm. to talk about the things that you care about. And I really, and it's great that you, we've gone back to conversation here, like having that conversation allows you and gives you the ability to have meaningful conversations and talk to you about the things that you care about, the things that you do every single day, you know, things about that you're learning, things about that you're doing in your work. So no, I, I love that. And I'm gonna, actually, well, this would lead really nicely into you about your new podcast. And I'd like to know more about that. Tell me about it. <laughs> Johnny, so I, I've, firstly, I've been listening to podcasts since I think 2005. I've been listening to podcasts for that long, you know, when you could only listen um, in iTunes on your computer. So I'm a complete advocate of the medium. Um, I was on my first podcast in when I had a previous business in 2007 or something like that. And then I wasn't on another one until the end of last year. Um, and I've never really wanted to do a podcast. People said I should. And I was like, but what would I talk about? What would I talk about? Oh, I'll get bored of that. And then suddenly, um, about three weeks ago, the idea just popped into the head. And really, again, it's about conversations and as I guide people to become business storytellers, the last thing I wanted to do was have a podcast about, these are your tips about business storytelling. You need to do this, step one, step two, step three. I didn't want that because I would find that boring because it's not about that. It's about the people, the journey they go on, the transformation that you can go on and you can give to your clients. So the podcast really is conversation with people who have gone from employee to running their own business or freelancing and self-employed. I believe in real people have real stories that you can relate to. They have so much that we can learn from because they've been through that journey. And the aim is to support anyone who may be considering the change. At the moment, everyone's talking, talking about the great resignation, the whole idea of freedom, people are questioning, I've been doing this for 20 years. Do I really wanna do this anymore? Is there something else I want to do? And it, the aim of the show is not to promote what I'm doing, but it's actually about the journey of people deciding they want change. I just happen to offer a program which does one type of change, which becoming a service provider around storytelling. So that inspired me. The minute I said that, I was just like over the moon. Mm. And you know, I've you know been fortunate. I've only done two weeks. I've already had seven um, people conversation with seven people um, looking for more. And I think the other thing is I've actually had some people who've filled out the application because it's application book your time on the calendar. And some people said, oh, I hope I qualify. And I'm like, you qualified yourself. You know, this isn't about your credentials and how much you've got. This is real talk with real people about your journey. And we can all learn from someone else. And I just feel there's a, a, a shift going. Maybe I'm at the front of the shift. The shift is we want to hear from people who are real. You know, whether that's a real, you know, I've had um, a husband and wife business, you know, 
they've been in business and now they're doing a business together. I have someone else who's been working full time and then he started a business and the pandemic started. Someone else who's been freelancing and you know they have three or four clients and that sustains them and they take three months off a year. So it's by hearing these different stories and experience from real people, you know, and that same person, as I'm saying, he used to be, he used to work on building sites and do break dance, being break dancing professional. So these are real people with real stories, not like I used to work for this guru. I used to work. And I'm, I'm sorry, audience. I hope this isn't you, but I got a bit tired of hearing podcasts of people who used to work in corporate. I've never worked in corporate. And a lot of people I know haven't worked in corporate. And it felt like if I worked in corporate, I could go to the next stage. And I was like, there's many people who have worked in corporate, who've done a weird jinky janky journey. It's all rich. And we want to hear from all of them. Maybe we might resonate with one or two of their journeys and stories or their tips. Yeah, I love it. You know, I've, um, I've obviously been in the journey of going into self-employment, starting a business and and being around a lot of people doing the same around creative networks of people that have taken that that dive in self-employment and starting a new journey. And it is, I can honestly say, the hardest thing I've ever had to do. It's it's hard and it will it will affect you emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, I've got two children and I've got one on the way and running your own business is way harder it's way harder so to have a platform where you can listen to real life people who are in the same boat as you you can resonate with the same stories and that you can connect with is so needed i i, I listen to platform i will watch videos and listen to the podcast of platforms say like the future with like chris doe which is amazing in its own way but it's it, it's very shiny it's very glossy it's very like what how things are when things are going hunky dory but there isn't much out there like what happens when you're down on your knees praying to god to get through to the next day that's that's the stories i want to hear that's the stories i can relate to because i've been down on my knees praying to god trying to get through the next day and you know the trying to get through the challenges that starting your own thing whatever that thing is is like so i can't wait to to listen to it is well, it is it you've recorded seven shows but i'll take is it out yet or is no, it it's not going to be out i decided it's going to be out um the first week of january that's when we're going to launch the show okay. um yeah. it's just a bit too close to the end of the year so i think it's the start of the year is good and johnny i would love to have you on the show and have a conversation with you because it's really about you just said all the real things and I, that's the whole idea when it's a conversation you know, suddenly you feel comfortable to have discussions, you know, because, and then this is the interesting part. That strengthens your personal brand. I feel many people are talking about personal brand, but what they're talking about is brand personal. And I think it's personal brand. And that's what we're focusing on. When we see the person that builds the brand, yeah wicked cool so that's quick fire question number one oh <laughs> <laughs> but it's great i love it it's the best i'm gonna not call them quick fire i'm just gonna call them fire okay fire questions okay next one your greatest mentor Ooh. you know what i would say my parents greatest mentors you know um they just wonderful you know not only they made my parents i'd say they were one of my best friends you know and i think the the gift there's one thing i remember a conversation i had with my dad and this was years ago i was probably a teenager maybe and he says yeah many parents make the mistake of feeling that they own the children but he says no we're just your guardians. We're here to guide you so you're able to guide yourself when you become an adult. And that's really stuck with me. You know, it's like, you know, just to understand that we're here to guide you so you make the right choices when we're not around. So they, they have been, you know, they have been wonderful for me. And I think the other thing that they've given me is they've allowed me to be who I am. 
You know, they've allowed all of us to be who we are, different people, and they've embraced us all still. You know, they haven't just said you should do this or that. It's like, hey, you're you, be you, you know? So they're my, um, they're my biggest mentors, I'd say. <laughs> no, it's a great answer. Um, you know, I, if that question got asked to me, I would probably say something similar because, yeah, I'm very fortunate and blessed that my parents have always been pretty supportive of, of what I do and they've always helped me and they've always been there to guide me when I needed them. And, yeah, th those kind of foundational stuff, the foundational values that I care about in my business, it all comes from them you know, about being trustworthy, hardworking, mm. you know, honest, all of those things that I've built my brand around. Mm. It's all, it's basically, it comes to them. Obviously I've sprung, I've sprinkled a few little things of my own flavors on there as well, mm. of course, because, mm. you know, you have to be yourself, but um, no, it's a, that was a, a great, that was a great answer. Um, okay. So the third quick fire one, or the, the, the third <laughs> fire question it's all about purpose. Okay. I'm, a, I'm, if you, you know, most of my content always stems back to purpose. Mm. My view on purpose is a little bit different from other people. And the easiest way for me to explain what I think purpose is, is it's your highest level of contribution. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm now going to point at you. What, what, what do you feel that your, what is your highest level of contribution? Um, inspire empower and guide i think those three words you know uh, i i kind of you know inspire others to realize that they can be empowered and guide them on their journey with that empowerment so i think um, my biggest purpose is to be an enabler for others enabler for others to reach the go on the journey get the freedom that they desire themselves realize that yes i too can do this you know, yes, it may take effort, but um, I think over the years, when I look back, you know, it was interesting you asked that because it was, was it about a year ago? Actually, it was probably about a year, 18 months ago. I was, I was walking, I was walking to the supermarket, you know, for any, any, for those of you who know, I was walking to Lidl's <laughs> and I, I was listening to a podcast and he said, and this person said, I can't remember what show, he's like, um, describe, you should be able to describe what you do in three words and he says everyone's got a sentence everyone's got five but people find it really hard to do three words and I was like hmm what are my three words and it took me six months to get to those three words and those three words happened when I woke up one morning went oh my gosh typed it immediately in the phone so I just that alone really is like I said what's your purpose what's your higher purpose you know and you know and sometimes we do things naturally we don't value it as much as the gold or the diamond or the crystal that it is mm. do you know that's the thing with purpose and it's good that you've you've obviously explored and thought about that and that's amazing i often deliver that question to all my clients and the business that i work with and it's a really difficult question to answer for a number of different reasons the first reason is when you're dealing with a group or group of leaders you've got to find a shared purpose and that becomes a bit more tricky but when you're dealing with one person or talking to one person you find it very hard to answer and they'll talk about making money or growth or things and like just business words but mm. when when you start to ask meaningful questions about purpose the answers tend to unravel naturally and they come out so one of the questions that i always ask and i always start with this with with my clients is what do you want what do you want and they always it's a it's a, a simple question but a very guarded answer most people won't tell you what they want but i will find out eventually by literally just drilling the question in their face for 10 minutes so they'll say well we want this we want higher growth we want to have sales we want to create new products and i'll just then i go to why so don't start with why start with want then why and i'll go why why do, why do you want that so they'll say well, we want this and want that and you normally when you peel back the layers of what people want you eventually land in this new place and it's normally so it's normally around about validation people want validation they want to be respected and often you, people just want to be liked and loved that's another thing and then once you can get to that core truth of what people truly want then you've got your purpose mm. because 
some people would be like, I want to be a change maker. I want to innovate. I want to create new products. I want to, I want to win awards. And then it's like, if you want to be a change maker and you want to do something purposeful or something meaningful, you've then got the core truth. And then it's just a question of just simmering that in a pan for a bit and playing with it and figuring out how then, how do we present that? How do we then package that up in, in a way that, that people can like relate to and, and can connect with. So for me, purpose, it's it, the, the, what's really great about the things that you said as well is that your purpose never really changes. It, you know, you, you could be Dennis today working on storytelling, but you could be Dennis tomorrow being an actor or a singer, or you could be designing cars. It doesn't really matter because you mm-hmm. want to inspire and guide. And it's, and that's why it's a North star because it's always there. It never mm-hmm. goes anywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, and when you find that, then actually everything else becomes easy. The good days and the bad days, it doesn't really matter because you've got a journey you've got a roadmap and most people don't have a roadmap mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and I think I think it's really cool because I think some of the work that you do and the work some of the work I do is quite similar but we just do it in very different ways mm-hmm. okay so the next thing I want to talk about is I, I have a question that I ask my clients now when I'm mm-hmm. doing strategy work with them and it is one of the best questions ever and it's who is the most trusted voice in your industry Okay, it's not a question for you. It's just a question that I I ask my clients. Who is the most trusted voice in your industry? So it's something quite interesting that you've put on your website that you help people help help them guide their voice so that they become the go-to person in their industry. They become that trusted voice. So the question, I suppose, is how how can you effectively use storytelling to showcase that value? to be the trusted voice in your industry? What, what kind of storytelling can you do to, to do that? Um, what, firstly, it's about consistency. I think this, the, the other um, thing I hear that I completely disagree with is people talk about telling a story or your story. Um, storytelling is a way of communication. It's about consistently using storytelling, infusing it in all your communications. And business is called audience magnet for a reason. It's about making you become an audience magnet, not me, yeah? How could you become the magnet to attract and magnetize your ideal clients to you so they choose to buy from you, yeah? So it really is, it is about consistency and doing it and not overthinking it as well. I think that's really important. And I think in terms of Chain makers, change makers in the industry. I, I find that tough to answer. Um, I'm guessing clients do, but the reason why I find it tough to answer is a lot of them are coming from a slightly different angle when it comes to using business storytelling. You know, but don't get me wrong. There's some really successful people, Donald Miller, who's well known. All these different people, story brand, but. I, they are coming from a very, you know, now he's got a, his business about marketing and stuff like that. Very successful in a way. He's probably the nearest because he was a writer. Yeah. But a lot of people are coming from the corporate. I'm coming from a creative background that, to be honest, um, I learned how to make films. And, and it's not just about filmmaking. It's about people in the creative world, what happens. And by the way, I teach BA and MA students now, and I teach the next generation of filmmakers as well, yeah? So I, I, I've been infused in that world, as well as working in the industry, as well as um, I've, I've created a company that completely failed called Zizzle, which was a online distribution platform for short filmmakers, which was pre-iPhone. So I've been around, I've had failures, I've had things that really hurt, but you know, and especially the platform that really hurt because you put your life and soul into something and it didn't kind of work because the timing was wrong. I didn't have enough money. You know, suddenly the world recession happens, but you learn. Now they're parts of my stories. I'm just quickly bringing them up, but you may not have known that about me, but it doesn't matter. We all have these little bits that we can bring up at different times, you know? So during all these kind of journeys and understanding which kind of people are good. I think there's been different people at different stages as I'm kind of learning and understanding more. And so people who were once relevant 
are not so relevant, but they were important for me to get to the next stage. You know, I, I'd say the biggest lessons really um, being based in London and the UK is I honestly feel that people in the UK um, have uh, a money mindset issue to deal with, full stop. And I think we've been indoctrinated since we were young and school from our parents and just how the UK society is. And you look across the pond in the States, they don't have that issue. They have other issues, but that isn't one of them. So just me as a person, it's just evolving. And I've gone from thinking I need to know everything to be worthy, to not feeling worthy, to now it's like, it's beyond worth. I, it's, I know it's gold. But that was a journey of many years, you know? So part of my own journey is to help people shortcut that. You know, part of it is when you have systems and frameworks and a process, you can get there quicker. Because I've stumbled upon things and then I've learned things. And I don't want people to have the difficult journey that I've done and taken. Why not learn from me? Just like when I, you know, in the podcast show, why not learn from other people who've been through a journey? Because that can speed it up. So I didn't fully answer your question because yeah, you did. Did you I? Did. There's many people, and I, and I'm I'm a bit of a weird one. They tell you people maybe have listened to five to seven podcasts. Um, I have a stream. Just ones I'm subscribed to is probably sixty. Mm. Sixty, you know, and they're the ones I subscribe to, not the ones I've listened to and haven't subscribed, but they're further down. You know, I just I I have so much today, probably twenty downloaded, but I'm a cherry picker. You know, I read. What's it about? And is it relevant for, relevant for me right now? There's a couple of things I'd want to pick up there. Actually, right at the beginning, it was really good that you were talking about consistency. And, you know, if you want to be a trusted voice, being consistent and showing up. that I think that's something I've struggled with, with my own Likewise. channels, because <laughs> I, I have to wear two hats. Well, actually, I wear about 20 hats. But in my career, I wear two hats. I'm, a, I'm the brand strategist for Seed. So I'm working with clients and then then I'm wear, you know, wearing my brand master flash hat where I'm talking about the things that I've do in the agency, then mixing up with talking to people like yourself. Um, and that leads on to the second thing that you, you said about experience and doing almost like doing the thing. And I suppose why I, I, I'm really invested into my channel and I think I'm going to be invested in it for, for a long time is... I use it as a channel to talk about the things I do at work and I have that experience and I am out there doing the thing. Mm. So I, I think where people try to be a trusted voice, but they fail is because I don't think you can be a trusted voice if you're not practicing what you preach. Mm. Uh, and I feel like I think that will eventually, like you can read loads and loads of books and you can listen to loads of different things, but you need to be getting your hands dirty and you need to be, you exactly. need to be, in the world of your clients like not just like sort of listening to them you need to be in their world you need mm -hmm. to be in the trenches with them knowing what's going on and i suppose a lot of my content comes off the back of mistakes and you talk about the business that you had i've had businesses that haven't worked out and that's how i've got my experience that's how i've cut my teeth and you know hopefully touch wood you know my current business is has learned from those things and is mm. stronger because of it so just to pick on a couple of bits i think the consistency thing is 100 percent. i get that and that's something i need to kind of be better at but i also think the 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 experience of what you're talking about and if you can combine those two things together with good storytelling then hopefully you can be that that trusted voice in your niche or industry could i just um comment on what you just said. Of course. Now, experience, as you said, is fundamental. Now, I want anyone listening to think, what if I'm starting something new? Probably 85% of your skills are transferable. So you already have experience that you could bring to whatever you're doing new. You may have less experience in doing that thing, but it's really odd, but in the film industry, yeah, many people are studying film, but who are the people who seem to get jobs? Oh, I studied history. I studied this. Why? Because they're bringing something different to the table. So you are bringing a different perspective to whatever new thing that you're deciding to pursue. And that is of value. So it's experience is you and your journey. 
that's all the experience that you suddenly bring to the table. Yeah, no, I love that. I, lo I love the fact that, you know, bringing a new flavor or something, a new skill or a, a, a different area of knowledge or something that you're interested in, a taste, and bringing that to create something else. And yeah, I totally get that. I, I recently read the book. I think I mentioned this on every podcast. So I'm sorry, <laughs> listeners, if, you, if, I, if you're getting bored of me saying this, but I read a book recently by David Epstein called Range. And he, he says in the book that, you know, some of the people that are doing some amazing things in the world is because they've got a range of skills or a range of different tastes and interests. And it's like a tapestry of different mm -hmm. things that you do and different things that you are that make you this unique thing or make, you know, create this new, new entity or a new voice or a new platform. So, yeah, I, I totally see that. And I think that's the great thing with um with being hungry or curious in something that when you start something new I actually quite I think that fresh naivety to something can be quite nice mm. because when you're old funny duddy like me and you've been doing stuff for ages you kind of you get stuck in your ways but young people that I see and students that are doing brand and brand building they come at it a new way in a fresh mm. way yeah. and that inspires me so yeah I love I love that Okay, I'm Dennis. I'm mindful of time. I've got I've got three pages of stuff to go through, and obviously we're not going to get through it. So I'm just looking at my questions now, and I think I'm going to jump on. Lastly, this last bit here about about what I care about and what the show's about. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's interesting. You also said three things that you are or are important to you, um, and I've got three words here. So the title, the tagline of this show is enlightened brand strategy. And what that means is if we look at enlightened, it's a pathway for positive change and growth. Um, it's an awakening almost. Brand for me, everyone's got a different interpretation of brand. For me, brand is an identity within a perceived space. Mm -hmm. When I mean identity, I mean it's the connectedness that you have with something, whether it be values or it be tastes or reputation, whatever that is. And then strategy, is a game plan. Mm -hmm. So, so this podcast is about creating and building a community for positive change and growth. So to relate this to storytelling, how, if people are out listening to this, that are looking to make a positive change, whether it be politically, environmentally, or socially, they're looking to grow a community. How can they do that through storytelling? How can they get out there and make a difference in the world? Um, well, my answer is really simple. <laughs> I'm going to go deeper. Just start. Just start. Don't overthink it. Just start. Know that the first one's not going to be very good. And when you know that and you're happy with it, just do it. Because you know what? You're not very good is probably a B plus for many people. I remember listening to a podcast is when someone said B minus is okay. Yeah, no, sorry. B plus is okay. Many people are aiming for A's and the difference between B plus and A, most people can't see the difference. So stop trying to be an A student. Yeah. A C student is better than someone who's sitting on the sidelines. Yeah. So just in terms of doing stuff, just firstly start. And secondly, um, don't overthink it. I, I think it's fine to start something, do it for a while. And if you don't like it to stop. You know, don't feel that you're wedded to something. You have to continue doing it. No, this is about choice. You know, and if you decide to stop, the real question you should be asking is, why am I stopping? Yeah, because sometimes the reasons you want to stop are the reasons you should be continuing. So, but again, don't feel stuck in doing something. The other thing is to actually think about what is the journey you want your audience, your clients, potential clients, your leads, your customers to go through. Because depending on where they are on their own journey with you, you'll be telling different types of stories. Yeah, so really be aware. That's why I say it's about a conversation continual. You know, it's not just one type of story. It all depends where someone is and how can I communicate in a way that gets them to think, you know what? I want to hear what this person says next. That's all we're trying to do. Yeah. We're not trying to change the world in what we do. What we're trying to do is to get the person to choose to want to hear what we have to say next. 
And when you realize that, suddenly you're like, that's my only aim, to get the person to choose to want to hear what I say next. Now, this is the other beautiful thing. Many people won't. They're not your people. Your people are those who decide to choose to listen or watch what you do next. And when you're speaking to your people, they're the ones who become your advocates. They're the ones who evangelize about you. And that's what you want, you know? It's better to, everyone talks about having a big list. Yeah, you know, 10,000. If you have 100,000, each person's worth X amount of dollars and blah, blah, blah. You know, I, I, I'm coming with a different approach. And imagine if you just had 100 raving fans. We're not even talking the Kevin Kelly 1,000 true fans. 100. And from that, just 5%, five people, chose to choose you to work with and you're a service provider. Hmm. I think you could live pretty good over that year if you continue to add value, infusing storytelling, so they think, oh my God, you just get me, you just get me, and whatever you do. So really, I, I, I'm, 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 I think it's time to go to the micro, project and be macro, but focus on the micro, because we don't need loads. We just need the right people. And then we need to continue to offer value to them so they choose to stick around. And a lot of people are actually pretty loyal people if they think they're getting value. And I, I feel that's the journey that we should be focusing on now. How can I create an environment where people choose me, choose to be loyal? So what does that mean? There are times where you screw up and don't do things, but your laws, when you say, oh, sorry, I did that, they'll say, no problem. You're human just like me. You're not some brand. You're not this name in the stars and the lights. You're a real person. And yeah, and I've done that. You know, I really appreciate you apologizing. So actually, don't try too hard. Start and then see where it takes you. You don't need to know what you're going to be doing in a month's time because just the act of starting opens up the fountain of ideas in your mind and things you'd never dreamed or thought of before will just come to the table just like that. Dennis, you're a legend. Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, where, where, if people want to know more about the work that you do and Audience Magnet, where would you like to send them? Where's, where should they look for you? Well, the best place is to go to audiencemagnet.com and that tells you everything you need to know about what we do and whether you know what we do resonates with you and you're interested to find out more um but johnny i have a free gift for your listeners um and the beautiful thing about this free gift is what we do as a business what i'm offering this isn't selling you anything this is to help you yeah so the business does something else yep all storytelling still so what this is it's um the four types of storytelling with 60 ways to engage your ideal audience yeah. So you can get that at theaudiencemagnet.com forward slash brand master flash. That's theaudiencemagnet.com forward slash brand master flash. And if you choose to get this, you know, for a limited period of time, you will also be invited after a couple of days to access another free gift, which is um, sell with story five day mini course for free. And that will help you get very clear on what you offer, who you're targeting and why people should come to you. So just doing that alone will put you ahead of many other people and give you confidence and clarity. Awesome. Brilliant. Okay, well, I'll take that link. I'll stick it on the show notes. It will also be in the comments on the video if you're watching this on, on, on the platform that you're watching it on. But Dennis, thank you so much for your time today. It's been really interesting. And hopefully, in the maybe in the new year, we'll catch up and we'll talk more. And I'll definitely take you up on your offer to come on your show. That'd be awesome. Excellent. Thanks so much, Johnny. It's been a blast having a conversation with you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. I hope you found that useful. The link that Dennis mentioned about the freebie, I'll put that in the show notes. And if you're watching the video, I'll put it in the video bio or in the comments on the platform that you're watching this on. I hope that was useful for you. If you do enjoy these videos, please do like and share. If you're listening to the podcast, please subscribe on the platform that you're listening to this, this on. 
But as always, be useful, be kind, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.